Hi there, I'm Colin of Clean and Co, and uh, also in the rug lab. And today we're going to be cleaning a couple of rugs, and uh, I'll just show you here behind us. This one is uh, synthetic and it's woven, and I've got a few in here at the minute that are uh, heavily urine contaminated from pets, and as well. Um, these rugs have came out of a house where there's multiple huskies and I'm not sure if you know or not but huskies are notorious for uh, shedding quite a lot of hair so I'll just I just want to show you the cleaning process and we'll get a wee look at the rug here now so you can see just how much hair there is in it so here's our rug um, I've cleaned one of these before with uh, from this customer and it sort of looks you can see the white hair through it but the actual design of the rug is really really nice once it's cleaned up but just to give you an idea of the amount of hair there is loads of hair loads and loads and loads and loads any pet owners out there dog owners in particular you'll know that um, not all dog hair is the same and I encountered one yesterday that was quite bad and in my opinion the, the hardest uh, pet hair to remove off anything is Jack Russell hair because it's really really short, thick and wiry and it's, it actually can, it can penetrate into fabrics and rugs making it more difficult to remove. But the hair we're dealing with here is husky hair which is lighter and doesn't do the same as what the Jack Ru Russell hair does so just a really really good vacuum will remove all of the hair on its own. If it was a different type of uh, short hair, I would probably have to use like a, a rubber mitt or I've got a brush. I've actually got it here, I'll show you. This little brush here has got rubber bristles on it, which is quite good for pet hair. And I've got a whole host of other tools. There's another one that you can use, which is a rubber glove. Just or like a rubber glove for washing your dishes that can be quite effective but again it depends on the type of dog different dogs different types of hair and generally pet owners you, you guys know yourself that not uh, there isn't a one size fits all tool or device that will do it all so for example whenever uh, we're cleaning upholstery I, I normally carry about four or five different tools for pet hair but anyway, we'll get the vacuum out here and uh, we'll start vacuuming all these rugs and backbeating them. But just for this video, I'm going to concentrate on the one blue rug. We'll be doing a video later on on uh, vacuums, which vacuums are the best for what situations, vacuum maintenance. But just for the purposes of this video, all you guys already know anyway that it's ultra important to keep your cylinder or your bags you only want to fill them halfway yes they can fill more you can fill them till they're totally full but once they get past the halfway mark they start to lose quite a bit of suction and bags aren't that expensive or if you've got a cylinder vacuum you don't have to pay anything these bags I use for the Kirby are the genuine ones they're HEPA filtered these ones are actually quite expensive the cheapest I can find them at the minute is probably about a pound fifty each and I have to buy them in bulk to get a bulk, uh, bulk buy discount basically but that being said I still won't uh, compromise on quality so I'll always change a bag as you can see here it's got this green lines the fill line I'll never never like you can fill it up right to the top but once you get to this point the vacuum starts losing effectiveness But again, that's, uh, that's a discussion we'll have in our day. I'll start vacuuming here and again I can see more hair 
I'm standing behind the camera here. I can see more hair on the rug than what the camera's picking up. But you'll see yourself in a wee minute um, just how effective this vacuum is at lifting pet hair. That's the front of it vacuumed and uh, yeah it's made a humongous difference and because it's, uh, because there's so much pet hair on the face of it and the rug was rolled up I have no shadow of a doubt there'll be uh, plenty of pet hair on the back so as standard anyways I always like vacuuming both sides of the rug so we'll flip it over and we will vacuum in the back side like I said as you can see there has been quite a drastic improvement with just vacuuming on its own and even though the rug looks in relatively good condition um, on the video here, I can see I can see marks here. There's a big section of yellow in here. And we don't have smell of vision. I wish you could smell this rug. Well actually I don't wish you could smell this rug because it is absolutely uh, disgusting. So I've no shadow of a doubt that there is plenty of urine stains on it and whenever I flip it over they should be quite apparent. not as bad as what I initially thought but there is still quite significant staining so if you follow my finger here this whole area of the rug is has been saturated with urine so what we'll do with this rug once it's been vacuumed and backbeat is we will roll it up and we'll put it into a specialized urine treatment and because it's a synthetic rug with a synthetic backing as well I will uh, let it soak overnight if it was a wool rug for example with the cotton backing I wouldn't let it soak as long because it could, it could cause issues but basically because this is a fully synthetic rug yes I can let it sit overnight in a solution and in my mind the longer the longer you can let the solution sit in the better it gives uh, it gives it that much more of a chance of getting all the contaminants killed and flushed out first time so let's get vacuum in the back and then we can start bagging it up for uh, treating it last thing but maybe it might do it it might not um, running the vacuum over the back side like that sort of acts like a back beater now we've got a dedicated back beating machine here which does a far superior job but <coughs> the vibrations from running the vacuum over the back side might have chopped out some of the deep down dirt in the pile but because it's such a short pile rug I don't think there will be that much if anything at all if it was a shag pile rug or a longer pile rug just run the vacuum over the back of it whenever we'd pull the rug back now um, you would see quite obviously quite a lot of dirt falling out of the face of the rug let's just see a little bit a little little bit of stuff not much I'll sweep it up here and show you but again we will be putting the 
plastic grids here out on the floor and back beating it properly. I'm not sure if you can see on the camera or not there, we did get a little bit of stuff. Not a big pile, but again, like it says, it's a very short pile rug. So I wasn't expecting to get loads of dry soil in out. So we're going to run our back beating machine over this rug. And I don't anticipate that we'll get too much out of this rug because it's a fairly short pile. So, um, but I like to back beat them all anyway, just to get every last bit of uh, dry soil out of them possible. The more dry soil you can get out of them uh, before you start wet cleaning them, the easier it is to clean later on. So it just goes to show you, even with an extremely thorough vacuum, how much dirt remains in your uh, rug. That's quite a bit there. Here we'll have our rugs bagged up. And what I'll do here now is, is put a few clamps to tighten up the bag so that the solution sits all the way to the top of the rug. But as you can see, within about two or three minutes, the cleaning solution started going murky already. That's it starting to break down the urine in these three rugs. a couple of hours later you can see that the solution has taken quite a bit of the urine out we're gonna let it sit in our few hours but you will see whenever we're finished the water will be a lot murkier than this so the rugs have been steeping for several hours now and as you can see the water is extremely murky that's all the broken down urine. So we'll get these rugs out and get them rinsed off and we'll fully flush them out with water to flush out as much of the urine and the soils as possible. Then we will uh, start to clean the rugs. says we've got three rugs rolled up in here and for the video purposes we'll only be dealing with big glue so we'll get this here rolled out and we will start rinsing out any of the remaining soils urine and uh, urine treatment
So as you can see, the water is running clear out of the rug there. So now we get to actually cleaning the rug. Um, we're going to spray in our cleaner and scrub it in, rinse it out, put it in the centrifuge and that'll be the rug 100% clean and sanitized. we've got the big blue uh, scrubbed and cleaned we're going to rinse it out here now uh, rinse out the last of any uh, contaminants in it and uh, we'll get it into the centrifuge to get it dried out so enjoy
that's the rug rinsed out. We'll get it rolled up here and we'll put it into the centrifuge. And as well, what we we'll do whenever we're spinning the rugs out, um, we'll put the hose onto it. And it helps just rinse any, any last residues that are left in the rug to make sure that the rug is absolutely dirt, residue free and the way it should be. As you can see, big blue as we've uh, came to name it. This came up really, really well. Again, I've cleaned one of these types of rugs before for the same customer. And let's see, that rug feels 99.9% dry. But as always, uh, we'll hang them up here. And we've got the industrial fans and dehumidifiers. And whenever we're finished washing all the rugs for the day, we'll. Uh, Put the fans on, put the dehumidifiers on, and uh, the synthetics they dry pretty quick, so maybe two hours to dry them out. Again, not bad for uh, considering that the rugs are fully soaked and had uh, maybe a hundred or two hundred liters of uh, water through them. So that's it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And if you've got any questions or anything you'd like to know about cleaning rugs or anything else for that matter, don't be afraid to give us a shout. Thank you now. Bye.